So for the next couple of days, we're going to be in the north of the island, in the Sanex area, and we're going to be looking at Dalradian, early Paleozoic, and early Devonian rocks, and then the Paleogene granites as well, and then mapping out the contacts between them to see what we can learn about the underlying structure and the structural evolution of the island. So let's go and have a look. So Glen Rose is at the north end of the island and the main ring road goes through it so it's actually pretty easy to find and handily there's a nice little car park right in the middle of the Glen and right next to some of the best outcrops and that's these lovely Dalradian low grade metamorphic rocks here that the students are sat on. We're going to have a look at them later though we're going to start up up on the west end of the Glen looking at the Paleogene granites. About 60 million years ago, the supercontinent of Laurasia rifted apart, forming the North Atlantic Ocean. And in a tip, as in a typical rifting setting, there was lots of mafic and basaltic magmatism. And that's generally what you find in the Northwest Atlantic Magmatic Province. So around Northwest Scotland, Northern Ireland and Iceland. And over time, the mafic magma evolved and became more enriched in silica and aluminium. And instead of erupting as basalts, um, or intruding as gabbros and dolerites, what you got is I-type granites. So I-type granites are essentially the silica and aluminium rich dregs of a mafic magma chamber. They're what's left over after everything else has erupted and after you've digested some of the sedimentary host rocks as well. And this hot bulb of rock blobbed up underneath Aaron, lifted it up and deformed and cooked all of the rocks around it. But there's not much contact metamorphism because unlike an S-type granite, this isn't a very hydrous melt. There's not a lot of water and other volatile fluids to carry away the heat. And this means that you don't get a lot of exotic mineralization like you do around S-type granites, such as the Cornwall granites, which are famous for their tin and other mineral resources. In this western part of Glensanex, the granite has all of these lovely waterfalls and terraces in it. And so what I think's happened here is that there's been extension and as the granite has lifted up, the outer parts of it have split away and fallen down along normal faults. And the reason I think that is because it looks like there's slicken lines from friction along the edges of some of these waterfalls and they all trend in the same direction. And that's usually a sign that you've got some kind of tectonic force acting upon the area. There's a number of different textures present in the central granite. This example here is what we call an aplytic texture. It's very, very fine grained, almost like little sugar crystals. Whereas this chunk here has got a typical coarse grained granite texture with really large quartz and plagioclase feldspar fenacrysts. There's also a biotite and a gold mica called phlogopite. If you want a more detailed introduction to granites, then check out my video linked above and below. How's about that for a shameless plug? Heading downstream, we come back to the Dalradian, which lies unconformably on top of the granite. The Dalradian is a supergroup of rocks found across northern Scotland in a diagonal stripe from Arran up to Aberdeen. Uh, originally, these were sediments and volcanic rocks deposited in a basin between two chunks of what would become northern Scotland. And during the Caledonian orogeny, when the southern British Isles and the northern British Isles collided and all of those sediments and volcanic rocks were folded, buried, deformed, heated up and metamorphosed to become the Dalradian supergroup. In some places the rocks are so metamorphosed you can't tell what they were originally other than a, a broad guess but on Arran the metamorphism is only a low grade, it's what we call green schist and so you can actually see a lot of the original sedimentary and volcanogenic structures so you could work out what kind of a setting they were originally deposited in. And what we find in Glen Sanex is that at the bottom of the sequence we start off with relatively fine grained rocks with sedimentary structures that you'd expect to find in a deep water setting. And the grain size gets coarser up the sequence and you get more evidence of underwater landslides and wave action as well. And that's exactly what you would expect if you were in a, a deep basin between two chunks of continent that were slowly closing. Even on the surface though, these rocks look like they could just be typical sedimentary rocks from a, a back arc basin or setting. Once you get them under the microscope or you look at them up close, you can see a lot of those grains are metamorphic minerals that you wouldn't get in a normal sedimentary rock. And that there are fabrics there that could only come from these rocks being deeply buried and heated and deformed.
The green colour, for example, comes from a combination of the higher temperature and pressure version of a phyllosilicate clay called chlorite, and also from the growth of very small amphibole crystals. And a lot of those chunky grains aren't actually quartz sand grains, they're newly grown albite feldspar porphyroblasts. You've probably also noticed the angular blocky nature of the outcrops of Dalradian. And that's because we've got a tectonic fabric called a cleavage overprinting the original bedding and sedimentary structures. So if you look closely at the Dalradian, you'll see the original bedding here is almost 90 degrees, but then you've kind of got this 45 degree angle imprinted over the top of that. And that's the cleavage. The cleavage is from where tectonic forces squashed the rock and the minerals, particularly the flat ones like the phyllosilicates, started to orientate themselves so that they were in a preferential angle. So think about squashing some playing cards. Then some of them are going to fold up, but most of them are just going to rotate so they're perpendicular to the, the force that you're applying and they're nice and flat. And so that's what's happened here with these minerals and that's what forms cleavage in rock. We've also got these cool blobby looking rocks in the Dalradian as well. And remember I said there were, there were volcanic rocks in the Dalradian as well as sediments? Well, this is some of the volcanic rocks. These are pillow basalts. This is where basalt gets erupted onto the sea floor and cools instantly, but still stays hot and gooey in the middle. And it kind of blobs out and exudes and forms these really pleasing lumpy structures. And we know that these are pillow basalts because we can watch them form on the ocean floor, like say for example around Hawaii. And then when we look at them under the microscope we can see that they're made of volcanic minerals and they've got the same kind of internal textures as modern pillow basalts. In this case the pillow basalts have undergone a type of low grade metamorphism called spilletization and that's where all the plagioclase gets turned into albite and the other mafic minerals get converted into serpentine clays and zeolites. And you can go and watch my video on zeolites to learn more about them. Shameless plug number two. I'm so smooth. Just before we go and look at the next rock, why don't we take a moment to just enjoy how beautiful this view is with these fantastic glacial valleys carved into the central granite mountains. People wonder why I like doing fieldwork and geology so much. If this doesn't answer that question for you, then I don't know what will. Noise. The youngest rock formations in Glen Sanox are the Devonian Old Red Sandstones and they rest unconformably on top of the Dalradian. Deposition of the Old Red Sandstones started much earlier in the north of the British Isles than it did down south. So it's entirely possible that here the Old Red Sandstone might actually be latest Silurian. Red bed sediments like this are difficult to get really precise ages on so latest Silurian to early Devonians pretty good. And like we saw on the beach, the old red sandstone here is comprised of fluvial sediments that were deposited in an arid braid plain river environment. We're lowering the old red sandstone stratigraphy here in Glen Sanex. So we have these wonderful round cobble conglomerates as well as the typical uh, pebble conglomerates, sandstones and mudstones. There's a much wider range of clasts in the conglomerates than the lower part of the old red sandstone succession on Arran. So as well as the typical Dalradian cobbles, we've got more exotic metamorphic and granitic material that's come from the Caledonian mountains and sometimes as far away as Greenland. My favourite outcrop of the old red sandstone is on the south side of the glen at the east end and it's this fantastic three-dimensionally preserved river channel that's been infilled with cobble conglomerates. Just think how powerful these rivers must have been when they were in full flow, thundering down from the newly formed Caledonian mountains and scouring the landscape with all of these boulders and cobbles. It must have been pretty amazing to see. As far as I know, no one's found any body fossils up here in the old red sandstone on Arran. But if you look carefully at some of the mudstone intervals, which represent lakes and ponds, then you might find some trace fossils called Beaconites, and these represent the burrows left by either catfish and lungfish that were hiding in the damp mud as the puddles dried out, and also possibly things like early terrestrial arthropods, like the ancestors of, of Arthropleura. Sadly, I didn't find any on this trip, so I can't show you what they look like. You'll have to Google it and have a look online yourself. There's Woman Tasty James down in the Glen. 
There's a few more secrets hidden around Glen Rosa and the Isle of Arran, but you'll have to go and look at them on your own. Wouldn't be much fun if I gave away everything in the video. And a trip to Arran wouldn't be complete without some Highland bagpipes, arranged by the lovely Eileen and Chris at the Little Rock Cafe. I've got lots of tasty food and a warm welcome, so when you go to Arran and stop into the cafe and tell them I said hello. And that brings us to the end of the trip in these videos. Here's one last beautiful Arran sunset for you. And all that's left now is to get the ferry home and say goodbye. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about the geology of Arran. If you've got any questions, comments, or things you'd like me to do in a video, stick them in the comments below. Check out the link to look at some shirts I've been producing if you want some cool geology swag. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter and TikTok at Geology Johnson for more geology themed content. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. So until next time, take care and I'll see you later, rock nerds. Bye. <laughs> Why is my sign off always so awkward? Because I'm an awkward person. <laughs>